Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk with you about how you can find your lines without necessarily knowing your body type. So I'm going to try to stay very organized. I have my notes here and uh, basically I'm going to summarize what we're going to do here first and then I'm going to give an example and then I'll go into more details. So the first thing that you want to do is to figure out the length of your lines. So the length of your lines can be long, moderate, or short. So if your lines are long, then you most likely have a small head. So that makes you look taller. So it doesn't matter what your actual height is, it just matters the size of your head. If you have moderate lines, not long or short, so your head is of a moderate size in proportion to your height. And then finally, if you have short lines, you have a large head in proportion to your height. Height. The next step is you want to find out the width of your silhouette. So the width of your lines. So if you have wide shoulders, you most likely will have a wide silhouette. So this is separate from the length of the lines. This is a completely different sort of axis. If you have wide shoulders, you most likely will have width to your silhouette. So that means that things should be pretty loose. So a wide silhouette is a loose silhouette. Sometimes it, you can also have a wide silhouette if you have wide bones, but you have maybe moderate shoulders, but you have very wide bones to your arms and legs or something, or wide hands and things like that. Of course, this is not exact. Um, so anyway, if you have wide shoulders, go with a wide silhouette, a loose silhouette. If you have narrow shoulders, then go with things that are pretty fitted and pretty tight. So that's a narrow silhouette. So narrowness is another way of saying fittedness. And if you have moderate shoulders, go for something in the middle. And then finally, we want to think about angles. So the angles here are going to be more focused on the face, although you can look at your angles overall, but focus on the face. And don't worry about your bone structure, just worry about what angles you see. And I also, it might be a good time to say this now because the angles are probably the hardest part to kind of figure out for yourself. The way that you can figure out your angles or your your lines if they're short or wide or whatever is by trying things on. Just like with color analysis, we try things on, we color drape. We don't say that, you know, we don't say that we have to look at the skin and look at the skin until it finally comes to us. So, you know, with this kind of stuff, it's much easier to understand your own lines if you try stuff on. So later in the video, when I mention some of the things that are associated with these elements of the silhouette, then you can try those elements on and see if you, if you like them or not. So anyway, the third thing after you figure out the length and the width of your silhouette, that's mostly the skeleton, then you're going to look at your face and sort of figure out the angles, though it doesn't have to be only the face. Um, so the angles are going to be sharp, beveled, smooth, rounded, or pointy. So it doesn't matter if it's because you have a you have soft cheeks that you have round angles or if you have actually very round bone structure. Either way, if you see primarily round angles, then you're going to have round angles in your silhouette. And we'll talk about what that means later. So for example, if you have short and wide bones, but you have pretty sharp angles, you might be flattered by short lines, so that means cropped things, wide things, which means pretty loose things, and then if you have sharp angles, you're also flattered by geometrics. And since you have short lines, then you also want to break up those lines, so you can look to your angles to see how you're going to break those lines up. So in this case, you would break the lines up by some pretty sharp contrasting detail because you have sharp angles. So this is looking familiar to some of you, this is sort of like an example of, you know, a wide gamine body type, so to speak. So you could think of it that way, but we've built it up from the recommendations from the bottom up. So you can build your own recommendations, you know, you could be um, a narrow, sort of narrow, short and sharp, etc, etc, and you can build up your own recommendations that way. So now as a sort of contrast to this, let's take a look at short and wide, the same thing, except now we have rounded angles to the face. So just like before, we have short lines, so things are cropped. We have wide lines, so there's more space to the silhouette. It's not super tight because that would look really constricting. And in this case, we have rounded angles to the face. So we swap out all those geometrics for round angles. So that means things like curls to the hair. That means things like intricacy, lightweight fabrics, because those things are very soft in the way that they look. If you think about a geometric detail, 
it has a very sharp line to it. It ends abruptly, but something that is intricate, something that's sparkly, has a very sort of non-distinct place where it ends. So that can look really quite rounded in, in its shape. So intricacy sparkles, and we also have tapering. So tapering goes with rounded angles because something that's tapered is going to look more like a curved line. Okay, so now that we have our example, let's take a look at some things to get you started with how to compile your own line recommendations for your own body. Um, so before I get into that, I wanted to give a quick disclaimer because there can be some contradictions. So for example, high necklines look good for narrow bones, but they're not recommended for a sharp and geometric face, but they also look good for short lines. So it's sort of a matter of choosing sort of what you value in terms of your look, what kind of look you're going for, and everything like that. This is similar to having a warm skin undertone, so you look good in warm colors like yellows or something, and then you have icy blue eyes, so for your eyes you might want to wear some cool colors. So I can't really tell you which one to choose. You know, it's the same for this. So you can use your own judgment, your own preferences to decide which things you want to value in your look. Okay, so let's quickly go through stuff, but this is not going to be exhaustive, just to give you guys a sense. So for the length of the lines, we have things like very long lines, so one long line of the same color, things that cut below the knee, things that, you know, sleeves cut below the wrist, sort of toward the knuckle, long v-necks, things like that, or open necklines, all of these things that create those longer lines are for long lines. Next up we have short lines, which is the opposite. So we have things that are cropped, we have short lines, and we want to make sure that we don't have a complete one long line of the same color situation. But depending on your angles, you're going to break up your lines differently. So rounded angles, you might want to softly break up your lines so that they don't look like one long line. And then if you have really geometric angles, you might want to break up your lines really abruptly. So that's one example of how this can come together. And of course, if you have moderate lines, then you would look most harmonious in sort of moderate lines. So things that are not particularly cropped, but also not one long line of the same color. Okay, next up we have width. So the width of your silhouette. So if you have wide bones, then most likely a loose silhouette is going to look most harmonious with you. If you have narrow bones, then a fitted silhouette will look more harmonious. And if you are in the middle, if you have moderate bones, not narrow and not wide, then a moderate fit will look most harmonious. And some things that are associated with a wide fit, one of the things that's associated with a wide fit is uh, an open neckline. And something that's a really narrow fit will have a really narrow tight neckline so those are some things and of course narrow fits in general mean something more tight something more form-fitting etc so that's one example of how that that could work finally we have the angles so for round angles you might have round angles because you have a round bone structure to your face or you have round angles because you actually just have a lot of softness to your cheeks either way it doesn't matter you will look really most harmonious with intricacy, lightweight fabrics, rounded shapes to the hair, etc. And you want to avoid things like harsh geometrics. If you have pointy angles, this is kind of going to be very small, pointy angles, like a small pointy nose maybe, a look most harmonious in small prints, things like lightweight fabrics, because sometimes those can sort of form little pointy angles in a way, because it can be sort of the edge of the fabric can form pointy angles. Um, sometimes some sharp tapering would look really good and things like that. Next up we have beveled angles. So beveled angles are really harmonious with things like folds in the fabric to pick up on those beveled shapes, those blunted shapes, some irregular blunted geometric shapes to your accessories and things like that, and also some textures to the fabrics that you're wearing. And finally we have, well not finally, then we have sharp angles, which look good with geometrics and uh, sleek textures and stiff fabrics. And then we have smooth angles, last but not least, in the middle. So in the middle, we have smooth angles. That means that we don't have geometrics, but we also don't have anything too intricate or soft. Everything is sort of in the middle. Midweight fabrics, smooth shapes in general, minimal detail, because since there are no angles, 
then we kind of want that minimal detail but we don't want to have it be too soft like the rounded angles because that's not quite right either so we go for minimal detail for smooth angles all right so that is what i have for you guys that is what i've come up with I'm curious to hear about your thoughts and if you guys have any questions then leave them down below. I'll be responding to questions in the comments section and if you have questions and you're too shy to ask, um, check the comments because I'll be responding to questions as much as I can in the comments about all of this. And if you would like more content like this then I also have Miriam Style Club where we have exclusive content and I also offer body typing and color typing through my website as well so I'll leave all those links down below. I'll leave some links to some videos you can watch here on YouTube. Last but not least, I did want to say that if you've been following me for a while, you might see some similarities with this way of finding your lines with my color analysis system called Artistic License. So you guys know that for Artistic License, you will find sort of your color family. So first, step one is you find if you're cool or warm. Step two is you find if you're muted or bright. So that's your color family. Those are the four color families, cool and delicate, cool and radiant, warm and delicate, warm and radiant. And then after that, you also look at your features to see sort of what else you want to add. Maybe you wanna, if you have dark features, you will make your colors darker. If you have light features, you'll make your colors lighter, etc. So if you guys are familiar with that, then this might sort of sound very similar to the way that I do artistic license. So. So you find if you have long lines or short lines or in the middle, then step two is you find if you have wide lines, narrow lines or in the middle, and then you sort of have your line family. So you could have short and wide lines, you could have long and narrow lines, long and short, long and moderate, etc, etc. And so you'll have your line family. This is kind of like the analog of having your color family in artistic license. And then after that, you can look at your angles and you can figure out how that interacts with your lines. So you can tweak your lines your your line family based on your angles so this has a really similar structure to artistic license and i hope that makes it very very simple to understand and very easy to understand so let me know how you guys feel about all of this and if you enjoyed this video and i'm really excited to see where we go from here if you have my heat just turned on. If you have video suggestions, if you have anything like that regarding this new way of seeing things, then please leave them down below as well. Of course, I'll be paying attention to that. And uh, that's it. I will talk to you guys next time.